Chances are, if you play video games like uh, flight simulators or racing simulators, you've seen uh, commercials from DOF Reality where they have chairs now that have motors built into the chairs to create motion left, right, up, down, and whatnot to make it really feel like you're actually uh, flying in a game. Like they have one um, set up that they're showing off here for Star Wars. They got one that they're showing off for DCS, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, the thing about it is, I mean, you know, they, they, these things are really, really, really expensive. I mean, $700, $800 in some cases. In fact, a lot of them really cost a lot more. But um, the thing about it is if you have the space and you have the money, uh, there are a lot of people who want to have stuff just like this and they want to play these uh, simulators with virtual reality and they want to have these things in their house. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, hey, if you have... A but at the end of the day, it's important to remember that you are basically just playing a game. So it kind of makes sense not to spend a ton of money on something like this, especially when you consider that it's actually cheaper to just take your money to an airport to uh, book uh, training or uh, discovery flights and to just go flying. My uh, airfield, for instance, charged you about $200 an hour. Uh, most of these setups cost in the thousands upon thousands of dollars. In fact, most of them probably exceed about $8,000. Because of DCS and a lot of the racing games that are on the market, there's a lot of options. I looked on eBay for a while and I decided against what I didn't want. What I knew I didn't want is I didn't want to attach anything directly to my desk because I just didn't think that would be enough. And I also wanted something that I could uh, mount my pedals to. So uh, what I ended up going with was the Next Level Racing Flight Stand. Um, I think they sell a lot of equipment, mostly for uh, car driving video games, but I ended up getting the flight stand to fly in DCS. Okay, so I finally arrived. This is my Next Level Racing Flight Stand. It comes in a nice big box. This thing weighs about close to, it seems like it weighs close to 100 pounds, but um, that's probably an exaggeration. It says the uh, gross weight is 25 kilograms. And uh, basically, um, all I got to do is open it up and uh, get it uh, set up. Okay, so here we go. This is it. Comes in a, this thing's huge. Okay. I, I don't think that the assembly for this is very difficult. But okay, the reason why I specifically wanted this one was because this was the least obtrusive. It's like you don't really have to drill anything into the ground. It um, allows you to hook up, um, obviously allows you to hook up a HOTAS system or it allows you to hook up a racing wheel. I don't use racing wheels because I don't play racing games. I play racing games in real life with real people and real cars. So, you know, <laughs> I didn't feel the necessary. Um, I didn't think that was necessary. You can upgrade the base stand as they show with... Uh, stands in order to hold a multi-monitor setup or you can upgrade this single stand by adding on the uh, racing chair or they show that you can add on what do they call it a flight upgrade so there are some upgrades for this but this is the most basic one i didn't need all of this right now if i ever moved my um computer to a room all by itself. Yeah, I might consider something like this, but uh, I think that's a little overkill unless I was getting one of those chairs that has like a motion system so that, um, you know, you can rock back and forth and everything. But I don't think, I, I think that's a little overkill for right now. So these are the two pieces that come in the box. These are the panels for mounting the uh, joystick or throttle on. And this right here, is the main assembly. Now the main assembly, well, for the most part, the main assembly is all metal construction, very heavy. Comes with another box in there. But um, don't let this scare you. This part, the main assembly of this unit is just one piece. So this part, all you gotta do is just set it up and it's already ready to go. So this part right here is actually very, very easy to set up because it's just a frame. 
So all you got to do is set this up, and then the other pieces pretty much snap right onto it for the most part. There are a couple of uh, bolts and screws and whatever, but all of that is very, very, very easy to do. Um, I have a, a screwdriver just in case I need it, but for the most part, most of this stuff, all you have to do is just push things in place and just uh, tighten them. Everything's pretty much just tight. So let's unfold this. This is the main unit. Comes very nicely packaged, I'll say. Very, very compact. And this is how you'll set up your height for your HOTAS. One um, holder goes here and then the other one goes the other side. And if you wanna use a plate right here for your steering wheel or a keyboard or a mouse or whatever, you can put that right there on top of there. So again, this is this thing is pretty much 100% assembled. All you just have to do is tighten a couple of things in. And naturally, I should give a nice shout out to China because China is the people who actually made it. Even though this company is technically an Australian company, China ships it to Australia, Australia ships it to America, and here I am, the end user. So included in those two boxes, there is one box that is specifically the race wheel stand. So here you have instructions specifically for the race wheel where you mount a plate onto the top for your racing wheel and then you can mount one side for your racing joystick. So this is not the one that I'm going to use. This is all the hardware that's included for it. I'm not going to use this hardware here. Now, they also obviously, in addition to the race wheel, they include the flight pack. The flight pack is what I will use. The flight pack includes the deck to add your throttle, to add your uh, joystick itself. And what I, I noticed that in a uh, video that another YouTuber had made, he actually had mount on pieces where he was able to add on lots and lots of instruments and whatnot. So the flight pack is what I will be using. And um, I don't have a lot of instruments or anything like that. I don't have any instruments, but there are people who might consider buying this for the Cessna Pro Flight equipment. And if you bought it for Cessna Pro Flight, you probably want to use it for, um, you know, to add on more instruments. But as you can see, yeah, this thing includes a lot. So if you have your own racing chair, like if you went to Micro Center, you can add in your own flight chair or whatever you want to add on. And this can be a really good basis if you want to build yourself a uh, mock cockpit, or at least if you want to have the tightness of a cockpit um, so that it can hold on to all of your equipment without things being pushed around and moved around, which is the reason why I bought this. I didn't like the fact that my stuff was sliding around on the desk. But um, here's a, a, a um, how should I say, one criticism. It's not really a bad criticism. I only wanted this thing for the flight pack. I didn't want it for the um, the racing wheel stand. I paid a total of $300 for it. But here's my question. How much money could I have saved if you didn't include that and you only included this? Could I have saved $50? Could I have saved $100? I would have really appreciated it if they had made it so that when I ordered this, it was easy for me to just get the flight kit and not the racing wheel kit. I think it's also worth pointing out that the flight stands that they give you are very modular. And if you buy a next level racing seat, the seat itself comes ready to accept the uh, HOTAS um, bracket that will hold up your joystick or your um, throttle. So that's actually good. And there's a couple of ways to do it. You can either mount them uh, straight into the center so that means that like, if you want to set it up like you have an F-18 where the stick is in the center, F-18 or the F-14 Tomcat, you can set it up that way as long as you have their seat. Or you can just set it up like you would in an F-16 or any other aircraft where you have um, the stick is on the right and the throttle's on the left. So this is actually a very, very interesting design that they have going for them. And it allows you to choose what you want to use. Now, some people I've seen have a very cluttered system where they use all of the parts and they set up their racing wheel and they set up their uh, 
uh, flight stick. But me personally, I, I want to keep this as simple as possible. The other thing I should point out is that because this has hinges here and here, it allows you to actually fold this entire unit up and you can pick the whole thing up and you can move it into a corner. Now, once your equipment's connected to it, you probably won't want to do that, but I'm glad that they give you the option to be able to pack this thing up uh, as tightly as possible so that you can put it in a closet if you ever had to pack it so up. This is just one of the plates right here. And the way that these plates are held in is they have a, 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 a how should I say, a pin that you screw in. And by applying pressure, that allows you to tighten up the um, the plate to the arm. So it's it's very, very simple construction. Thus far, I haven't even had to use tools okay, yet. Okay, so right now I'm looking for the placement that I want for the pedals. So basically, it's really, really simple. I'm going to put the pedals on first. I'm going to snake the wire and possibly use some twist ties to connect the wire to one of these sides. And then I'll use the adapter that I have to run a single cable right to the computer. Make it as simple as if possible. If you are a person that uses the Logitech G pedals, and chances are you probably would be because most people who would train on the Cessna Pro Flight system are most likely going to have the Logitech G pedals plus the Logitech yoke and the Logitech throttle quadrant. The one thing I will say, the, the holes that are in this race uh, stand do not line up properly to the Logitech system. However, you can still get it done with the first two screws. So what they did was they give you two screws that look like this. I put one here, I put one here, and then I kind of squeeze this one into place when I let this one just slide through. So basically, it's tight right now, but then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these two nuts right here, these two nuts, I'm going to attach these to the back to make sure that this stays in place. However, right now, this is so tight, I don't necessarily need the nuts. I'm just going to use it just because, um, you know, just to make it so that the wheels don't come out. However, if I wanted to make it so I could easily take the uh, pedals out at will, I, I would just not use these two nuts. But I'm going to use Regular the nuts. Regular bases do not have enough surface area for right here, the uh, X56 Rhino. So what they did was they included uh, an adapter plate for the X56 Rhino and the F56 Rhino throttle. So you have to, if you have the Logitech bases, they're probably too large. So you have to attach these bases to the holders in order to attach this stick. And as you can see, it's a perfect fit. So as long as you use all of the screws and stuff that they give you. They give you plenty of screws. That's not a problem. Whatever your equipment is, whether you have the Warthog Hotas or whether you have a Verpal or whatever, it these plates should be enough to take care of it. No problem. So I've mounted my joystick to the base plate, mounted my throttle to the base plate, and all you have to do is slide the base plates onto the stand. I separated the stand just so I could put the uh, um, pedals into position. But basically, that's all it took. It took me about 20 minutes tops. And this is all of the hardware that we have left over because I am not using all of the extra hardware for a racing stand. So there's a lot of stuff. There's, a, there's adjustments. There's extra add-ons and stuff. And so I have an entire box here of hardware. The only downside I will say is that you see these side tech bases for these Logitech equipments. The problem is that the uh, screws that they give you, they only give you four of these. You see these screws? They only give you four of these. The problem is that needs four, that needs four, and the, the uh, pedals need another two. So I ended up taking a trip to the hardware store and I got these uh, eight by 32 by two and a half uh, stove bolts. And these made it so I had enough bolts to go, um, you know, to each one of these uh, pieces. Cause basically you need 10, but they only give you four. Now it kind of looks good. It, do it doesn't look bad at all. It looks very uh, professional. The only downside is the uh, bolts are a little longer than their bolts, just a little bit. They're probably about a, about a, a half inch longer. But for the most part, you're not even gonna notice it. Now, I know some of you guys who have uh, obsessive compulsive disorders, 
Uh, you'll probably go out and you'll get those little black screw-on caps. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, you can make it even neater and you can cap it off or whatever. Or you might even cut your own bolts. I don't know. The bottom line is um, these, uh, I, I got two packs of these because they came six in a pack. So I got two packs. Each one was $1.99, which is virtually nothing. So there it is. I'm very uh, satisfied that I was able to take care of all that. And uh, there's a lot of the equipment that I won't be using because I don't have a next level racing chair. I have a different chair by a different maker. But for the most part, $300, there was almost no way to beat it because most of the other setups are either more expensive or they're more cumbersome. Oh, this is my desk. So as you can see, I was able to clear out all that extra space that was taken up by these huge, huge hotel boxes. Okay, this bar extends higher than the actual desk does. Now, that's not really a problem. It's just that it means that before playing, you may have to set up a couple of adjustments before you start playing. So anyway, what I like about this is once you get everything, because I, I haven't, I haven't uh, tightened everything yet because I haven't uh, gotten everything into position. But once everything is tightened, it makes it so after you've set up your adjustments, you decide how high you want everything to be and where you want everything to be. Basically, everything will be stiff. Things won't move around. They won't slide around and whatnot. And uh, at that point, you're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to uh, tighten this up. I, I'd say that, uh, see, I... I, I I'd really say that this is a little bit far forward. However, you know, that's how far I'm going to adjust it. I, I actually wrote a letter to this uh, company, Next Level, and I actually suggested that um, they make this plate right here longer. And the reason why is because there are some people that take their flight simming really serious. And what they do is they buy, what are they called? Uh, what? F18, F18 USB uh, panel. So when they buy these panels, there are some people that take this real seriously and they buy the actual panels from Tech Creations, right? So if you buy the stuff from Tech Creations, they have panels. These things cost like five and $600 each where you can simulate the uh, F18s uh, fire control and the oxygen control and all that, which I, I think that's a little bit overkill for playing a video game. But there are some people that take this that seriously and they're willing to uh, buy these uh, panels. And um, Tech Creations, they make all of these panels in, uh, I believe it's Australia. And you can have these things shipped to America. This one right here is $310. These, these things are not cheap. Like a lot of the people who actually really build real cockpits and stuff in their basement um they spend a lot of money i'm talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars and um to them money is no object so they really don't care it's like if you have a hobby that you really enjoy it's like that's just what you do you know so um the last thing i will say so I'm here with is the, that uh, uh yes yeah, so this is a video this is a video that i made a while ago um cool. where i was uh flying a uh, cessna 172 skyhawk and the thing about it is uh, when we get back to flying and once coronavirus is uh, knocked out or whatever, when I get back to flying, I, I want to fly a Sirius SR-22 probably, or probably even a Citation jet or a Vision jet, whatever they've got, because uh, certain aircraft they can lease out and this, that, and the other. But um, time will tell. So uh, there was another guy who bought this racing stand and i actually uh sent him a message um like ne next level racing yeah there were two other people that i saw and they bought this next level racing flight stand and this was just one i think this was kind of like a commercial right here and uh they had the logitech pet she had the logitech pedals for one and then she also had the flight yoke and she hooked her system up like that so that uh she could make her system more like a cessna um, I wasn't really interested in uh, the Cessna Pro Flight, so I didn't um, 
go that route. But if you wanted to hook it up like a Cessna, that's what this table's for, right? See, that that's what you're hoping to achieve by doing all of this. So you're making it so you can have a, a jet sim and you can also have a Cessna sim. So that's what she did. But there was another guy. Um, I don't think, is this the guy? The, yeah, because there's another guy. I think he had a powered chair and everything. But I, th I think it might, yeah, it, I think this was one of the other guys I watched. Now, he set his up specifically so he could use it as a uh, steering wheel and everything. Um, looked pretty good the way he had it. But um, again, I don't have a steering wheel. Now, I was hoping when I bought this that I'd be able to slide it all the way under my desk. But because this thing is so much higher than my desk, apparently that's not going to happen. What I do like is for times when I don't want to use it, I can simply pick the entire thing up and I can take it elsewhere. So for as it is, um, if you need more space sideways, you can pull it right here and then tighten it like here. If you need a little bit more space, if you want to keep it, if you want to keep it cramped in, then you can do that too to make it look a little bit more tighter. But um, basically, that's what you have right here. So you've got your your hotel system, and you're sitting a little bit further back away from the television than I want. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, the monitor. However, if I want to move the monitor up, I could just pull the monitor up. And then some people have really, really big monitors or they have three monitors and everything. I'm not going that far. But what I also will say is if you're using this and you have a virtual reality headset, the monitor doesn't matter because now you're going to have the goggles right on your face. So um, ultimately, this next level racing uh, kit is part of the next level racing chair if you want to use it that way or it can be a standalone and i'm just happy that i was able to get it in a in a position where i can um, use my equipment and i don't have to worry about stuff slipping and sliding all the way around um, my table or anything else i really really like that but um for right now i'll say that's about it um i'll try to make another video possibly i'll have somebody uh record me while i'm using it but um three hundred dollars uh, i i think i, I would have been more comfortable paying 200 because as i said this is the only portions of the equipment that i wanted i didn't need all the extra stuff i didn't need the steering wheel stuff my guess is that they sell it that way to make sure that they never actually have to put more stuff in the mail so they'll just say okay you know what pay 300 dollars, and now you get everything so this way you don't have to worry about hunting down pieces later. But personally, I think $200 for what I wanted out of it would have been a lot better um, for me. But, um, you know, again, they didn't, uh, they didn't section it out that way. And I guess they did this to make it as uh, streamlined and shipping as possible. So um, that's basically all I had to say about this. And I can't wait to have some fun using this and making some videos. So um, that's basically it. If you have any questions about the Next Level Racing Stand, besides the videos that are online and besides the uh, video that I just made, feel free to ask.